Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Nolan Financial Radio. My name is Tara Nolan from Nolan Financial. If you're new to the show, welcome. This show is all about education and giving you good questions to ask because Chris and I really believe your financial success starts with being able to ask good questions because how do you know what's even possible until you start asking those kind of questions? So I would encourage everyone to visit my website at www.nolanfinancialpartners.com. And while you're there, be sure to click on the radio page because we record all of our past shows and we cover a lot of topics from IRAs and 401ks, mutual funds to um, what we're going to talk about today, real estate. And when you're there, you can you can subscribe to the program on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have a question or you want to set up a virtual or face to face meeting. So welcome, everybody. We're going to talk about buying or selling a home. And this gets me very excited if you don't know, because before I started my financial business, Chris and I started out as real estate investors. And we have a lot of, of interest in that. You know, one of the things is, is pretty well known as when you try to go out outside of the W-2 job is real estate, property, buying and selling your home. That's a way that you start to build some wealth and create an asset for yourself beyond just earning that paycheck. So we're going to get into some exciting stuff today. And uh, I look forward to that. But before we jump into our topic, I wanted to reach out and say, Tony, how are you doing today? I am doing great, Tara. I've never been better. Had a great week this week. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, kept busy, but not too bad. And um, got got a lot done around the house, too. And just, yeah, it's been a pretty good week. The weather's been pretty good. So I can't complain. I mean, sometimes I still do, but I can't complain. Um, uh, how about you, Tara? What's going on with you? Well, I'm very excited. We woke up this morning and I can see Pikes Peak again. We've had ah. so much smoke coming in from California that oh, I actually haven't yeah. been able to see the front range for a couple of days. So that's a gift to wake up and go. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah, I can see and, and take a breath of fresh air. Yeah. And yeah, the, I just time just flies by. It's like I don't I keep waiting for that time in life where it's going to settle down and kind of hit a flat spot. <laughs> 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 Just, oh, Tara, I know your life and that's not that's not going to happen for you. But Sorry. one of the things that's really been fun over the last two weeks, Tony, is I with my new job in the reserve, I'm, I'm finishing up with command and moving on to my next role. And I've gotten to just have mentoring sessions. And, you know, we talk about it on the show, like wealth is a team sport. And I just realized, Tony, that that's part of my life in every aspect. And yeah. in the Air Force Reserve, I'm moving on to my new job. And right now, what I have been doing is just reaching out and talking to all these people saying, what do I need to know that I don't know? Right. And, and Tony, these people have just been so generous and fabulous. And they, they share with me like just little things that you wouldn't think about. Like I'm going to Germany. So they're like, you might want to get your international driver's license. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. I wouldn't have thought of that, though. Or, you know, just things that you just don't even consider or my favorite one is uh, be nice to people <laughs> uh, well you do that anyway you, you, didn't need to be, you didn't need to be told that now the the international driver's license I, that that i wouldn't have thought of yeah that's important right. i guess and and so it's it's the same thing that i do with my financial business tony is i help people not because they couldn't do it themselves but because i can help them fast track their path to success yes exactly and helping people, especially like my medical people, my doctors and nurses, they're so busy. They don't have yeah. time to become financial yeah. experts too. Right. And, and so, you know, I have mentors for everything in my life and the people that I really enjoy working with Tony are those people that go, I need financial success, but I don't want to figure it out. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, well, and, and when you say they could do it themselves, uh, they could, but also uh, would they save as much money? Would they have as much money? And I mean, it's, it's a fact that uh, working with somebody who knows the pitfalls and knows all the strategies, uh, it can make the difference. I mean, it can make the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful retirement. Uh, that's for sure. It really helps Tony, right? Because anytime you're, you're dabbling in something that you're not an expert in, you're going to make mistakes. And, and with so financial planning, a uh, mistake means money. Right. And so you just yeah. set yourself back. So it's not the end of the world. But when you work with a professional, you get to avoid a lot of mistakes. Yeah. And that's that's the key. 
Well, you said we're talking about what we need to know about buying and selling a home, uh, especially when it comes to later in life. Uh, but, uh, you know, especially in retirement or just before we're getting ready to retire. And, uh, you know, I think I'm looking forward to this one because it seems like uh, the last several months you can't browse a news website or go online without seeing uh, stories about houses selling hours after they're listed for prices way above listing or they're all going for 50 or a hundred thousand over what they're asking prices and uh you know without any contingencies i mean the housing market's kind of gone crazy hasn't it it's really crazy right now and i can tell you chris and i have had a rental property and we've had the same family there for almost 10 years oh and wow Tony, that's just, fortunate they just said this year they're like we want to buy it and that was always part of the deal it's like you know if you want to buy it at some point, we'll sell it to you. So kind of unexpected for Chris and I were like, Oh, okay. Yeah. So we, the house is, is going to be sold. And, but that forces us now we have to do a 1031 exchange to put that money back into another property. So mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh boy, we're having to buy a house at the height of the market. <laughs> but oh, that's it's, tough. But it, you know, it's, it's all goodness. And so, but what's really helpful about today is start to talk about, whichever end you're on, what are the things that you should have? And I love, I found this great article in Kiplinger. And so they had some just, you know, you want to sell your house and you want to make as much as you can for it. Sure. And so there's those little things that you can do that really make it um, work well. And one of the first ones I can get on board with is people like to have a dedicated laundry room. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. Well, and I can tell you, we actually did a remodel in our house here that we live in. It's an older house. And that was one of the things that we did was we had the washer and dryer were downstairs. And when I broke my ankle two years ago, I couldn't get up and downstairs. Sure. And so we actually took a little one little um, kind of entryway room that was there and we turned it into our laundry room. So now it's right off the kitchen. It's at the same level. You don't have to go up and downstairs. We can close the door so no one needs to see my dirty laundry. It's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, clearly the days of just uh, putting a washer and dryer into a nook off the kitchen or in a uh, large entryway, those days are over. Uh, you know, you used to see the old farmhouses where they had a big entryway and the washer and dryer might be shoved in there. And that's just mm -hmm. not, that's not good. I mean, people want a dedicated space. That's a good point. It's, it's wonderful. And I had never had one until I think my third house, you know, moving around in the Air Force, you move every couple of years. And we had a house that had the whole room and it had the bench to fold your clothes. It's it's a high quality of life. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, and so the, the next thing you want to look for are ceiling fans. And Tony, those are simple to do. Yeah, I have put true. those in myself. I remember I was putting in a ceiling fan and it, the direction said that had the black wire and the red wire. <laughs> oh no. But but I had a green wire. <laughs> oh no. And I was like, the directions didn't say anything about the green wire. So I, uh -oh. I was talking to my brother on the phone. I'm like, well, you'll know I was electrocuted if I <laughs> if I don't stop talking to you. <laughs> yes. Wow, well, are you here? Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Um, well, you know, the thing is is lighting in general, exterior lighting, interior lighting. If you if you want to uh, bring, get more for your home. I think that's a big thing people are looking for and ceiling fans is one of them. And that's something I haven't done uh, yet in our house. We have a house that was built in the seventies and it does not have ceiling fans or even, uh, uh, lights in the ceiling in a lot of spots in our main living room or in the bedroom. So, uh, that's something I'm going to have to do and bite the bullet and do. And I think that it adds value to the house. People like it. Yeah. And it's actually, it's not that hard to do. Yeah. So and, and they, they allow you to maybe bump the thermostat up a bit, but you can still keep people cool. So in the long run, uh, you're going to save money and energy. And I think buyers like that as well. They really do, Tony. And so that brings us right to the next thing is, is energy efficiency. Yes. Yep. Um, That's true. It, it hits like, on a lot of levels. You're saving yeah. money you feel good about the environment you're you know it's it's a win all the way around yeah well what is the does the article say anything about what some of those cost savings can be if you get energy efficient appliances or put in ceiling fans things like that well it really does tony and that's a great point for those folks listening that want the numbers 
So like for an example, an Energy Star certified washing machine can generally be purchased for between $700 and $2,000. And it uses 25% less energy and 33% less water than a standard washer. Wow. That's, that's huge. Yeah. And then swapping out your old school dryer for an energy energy efficient, say that three times fast model <laughs> can save us <laughs> $200 in during the machine's lifetime. So, wow. You know, it's nice when technology is helping us. Yeah. And, and the same thing can happen with dishwashers. You know, they cost about 400 to $1,900, but then they have the new ones, Tony, they have sensors in them that determine how many dishes are in there, how many, how dirty they are. And, and it can adjust how much water you're using for every time you run the dishwasher. Wow. Wow. So I feel better about that because with Chris and I, just the two of us, sometimes I feel guilty that we run a dishwasher instead of just washing the dishes. But right, right. Now I can feel good about myself. Yeah, yeah. Well, and another <laughs> thing, and I, I can talk about this because uh, I've done some work on the side for a window company and have a, a friend who's a, a VP at one of the biggest uh, window manufacturers in the country. Uh, and new windows are a big thing. Uh, a lot of homeowners know that they're a major investment and with windows, you get what you pay for. Uh, the good ones are outrageously expensive. Um, but it, it, if it's time to replace your windows, you got to go the energy efficient around, um, uh, route and spend the extra money. Uh, it's going to make your home more soundproof, more comfortable. It adds value if you're trying to sell your house and um, you can get really good energy efficient windows. You can even get, um, if it's a good company, not like an outside tinning that can peel off, but the the glass itself is UV glass that within it, it has, you know, it can block out the heat mm -hmm. uh, and so or the sun and your house is going to be more energy efficient. It keeps more of the heat or the cool, whichever you prefer, uh, depending on where you live inside the house. And I just think it's, you know, your, your eyes will roll back if you hear the prices on new windows, <laughs> but don't get the cheap vinyl ones. That's for sure. Because a good windows will last forever if you take care of them. So I, I just think I just wanted to add that as a little, cause I happen to know a lot about that because my <laughs> wife and I just replaced windows in our house and it's just, uh, money, <laughs> but you save every month. Now we save, we notice our energy bill went down. So it's, it's, yeah. Yep. So you can tell the difference. You so, can tell the difference immediately. Um, the next thing, Tony, I wanted to get a little controversial. Is oh, oh, oh. We're talking about your house and there's a big debate is, is your house an asset? And I can tell you uh, as a financial advisor and as a real estate investor, I would say, your house is not really an asset because you're living in it, right? So you can't pull money out of your house while you're living in it. And so the great part about this conversation today, though, is like right now the market is through the roof. And if you do little things to your house, you can make it sell for a good price. When you sell your house, it, it does become an asset, especially if you can make a profit and sell and then yes. look at downsize. In that scenario, your house is an asset. Mm because you're being yep. able to take some of that equity out of it. But as long as you're living in your house, there's a big argument that your house isn't really an asset. It isn't really, no. Because you live in it. Yeah. But where it can become an asset is like talking about now, I'm, I'm talking to some friends of mine, actually, I, their clients as well. They're getting ready to go full time with an RV for a couple of years. And they're going, wow. you know, the market is through the roof right now. We know next year we're going to go full time. Should we look at selling our house and take advantage of the market? Because we, we're going to do it anyway. And so yeah. they're actually if having they're doing buy. it anyway, they should. And if they don't have to immediately buy another house, see, that's the problem right now is you can get way more than your house is worth right now. I mean, in most places, uh, but you also have to find another place to live, right? right? That's the, that's the kicker. But if they're already planning on downsizing to an RV for two years, I would, yeah, I hope you told them, yeah, sell your house, make some right. money, right? Right. Yeah. So, so it, it goes back to our question of it all depends, right? It all <laughs> there's, depends. There's no That's one right. size fits all. But Tony, I would just say, Chris and I have set aside 20 complimentary appointments for the folks today that are, that are wrestling with some of these questions. And it, it does get complicated when it comes to real estate and your own home. And then sometimes if you have a second home, 
there's some flexibility and, and things you can do right now to take advantage of a good market. So I would encourage people to give Chris and I a call 719-210-4242. If they want to figure out what's the best decision to make in terms of their house and, you know, upgrading it, selling it, keeping it, because there's no 100% right or wrong answer. It, yeah. it all depends on your holistic situation. Yep. So 719-210-4242. And why don't you give our listeners that web address as well? You have a brand new website, a, great, a lot of great resources there, and they can contact you through the website. What's that address? Sure, Tony. That's www.nolanfinancialpartners.com. There you can check out the different services we offer, and you can also contact us through the website. All right. Nolan Financial Partners. Dot com. That sounds great. And a great show so far today. Uh, you've been talking today, Tara, about some key things home buyers are looking for as they shop for a new property. Uh, what do you have for us next? Well, one of the things that's interesting is, especially like for people here in Colorado, is your outdoor living space. Ah, and, that's and huge. So if you have an outdoor deck or a patio, then that really goes a long way to making your house kind of stand out when people are looking. And yeah. it's just that it's that outdoor space where you can barbecue and you can have family and friends over. Uh, Chris and I did this a few years ago because we live out in the country and I was like, we cannot mow and manicure this entire property. But what we can do is create a nice patio so that when people come over, we've got a place for everybody to sit. We've got the yeah. barbecue and, and we've really enjoyed that investment. Yeah. I think that's smart. That's a good investment. And, you know, uh, patios, if they're made with uh, concrete or pavers, I mean, they're a little cheaper than a deck. So that's 1500 to $4,000. And I think they really appeal because they're easy to maintain. And like you say, uh, that's an area to be outside, especially in Colorado. Uh, but really in all places, people love their decks and their patios. And I think a lot of people have always valued a really nice backyard where they can get outside and unwind. I think that adds tons of value to a property, even more than some of the inside stuff we talked about, uh, because that's what people look for. I know my wife and I are appealed like, oh, nice fenced in backyard, nice deck, nice patio, uh, you know, and that's, uh, you know, these remodeling shows you see on TV, like on HD. TV, uh, they increase the desire for thoughtful and comfortable outdoor spaces. I know a lot of people are investing in outdoor kitchens and barbecue areas too. It, it's crazy. Well, and one of my lieutenants was telling me, you just reminded me a couple of years ago that for mental health, it's really important to spend at least 10 or 15 minutes a day outside. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so it, it, there's a reason there's a psychology behind why we like those outdoor spaces is it's, it keeps us healthier. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. Well, and I think that's, that's a good point. And, uh, you know, everybody, uh, loves to, uh, get outside and like, I, I just, some of my neighbors, I we're itching to remodel our backyard. We've got it fenced in, we've cleaned it up a bit, but we've got to do some more. And, uh, you know, this has given me some ideas, Tara. Now I'm like, I'm kind of thinking, what am I going to do? So what's next? Uh, what should we talk about next? Well, here's the thing that really Chris and I argued over when we did our remodel was a, a nice <laughs> no. big kitchen sink. Oh, we had wow. We had this little corner sink. It was like right at the corner of the house. We have two windows and I thought it was fine. But like I said, yeah. I don't do dishes. <laughs> and, <laughs> You're admitting Chris, that. That's good. The first step is to admitting it. Right. And Chris is like, no, we need a big, deep kitchen sink. You know, like one of those country kitchen sinks. Yeah. And, and so, you know, okay, I agreed. And Tony, I can tell you, it's really nice. It's <laughs> nice to be able to yeah. go and put your dishes in. And it's big enough for like that cookie sheet or that lasagna pan or that big pot. Exactly. It, you don't miss it. You don't, you don't know until you have one. But now that we have one, I could never go back to that other sink. Yeah. And yeah. so this is something that you can do. And I like the idea of upgrading your house to live well now, but then making changes that will help you sell later when you want to sell. Yeah. And so this is one of those changes that makes sense because you get to enjoy it, but it's, it's not like some weird little thing that you just like. It's something that everyone will like. Everyone likes yeah. a nice big kitchen sink. Yeah. Everyone does. I, I would agree. And I think that's great. And you know, the costs of putting in a sink aren't too bad. I mean, you can spend a grand just on the faucet, 
but uh, you know, you don't have to, I mean, they start at a hundred dollars and go up from there. And, and, you know, I had no idea uh, that sync prices were all over the place, you know, that, ver that variety, but we replaced a faucet not too long ago. And it's like, Oh, we can get this one for $80 or we can get this one for 1100. So there really is a huge difference. Uh, but you know, you got to go for appeal. And uh, I think that's great. Uh, you know, I'm, that's why I'm in the radio and podcast business rather than an interior designer. I don't know right. about these things, Dara. <laughs> well, one of the things I like, Tony, is I think a lot of the things that we're talking about in this article, they're um, not necessarily like how things look, but they're how they feel. Sure. And, you know, that nice outdoor space and having a nice kitchen sink, it's, it's creating value for your daily life. And, and that brings us to the next thing that I really love is if you can have a pantry. Oh, yeah. Like a walk-in pantry, one with a door and it goes in and yeah. And those that, are really we, nice. We have a nice big pantry and it, what's what I like too is it's not too deep. So I, what I don't like is those shelves that are deep that there's, there, there gets to be the stuff that's oh, in yes. the back of exactly. the shelf. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yep. So exactly. We have a lot of shelves. They're floor to ceiling shelves, but they're, they're shallow. So whatever you see is what you have. But it, it's just nice because everything's laid out. And so you don't have to like go and dig and try to figure out what you have or, yeah. you know, those kitchen cabinets, you know, you sometimes you get those nice big kitchen cabinets, but unless you're six feet, feet tall, you can't reach them. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it's really nice when you have a pantry that you can walk into. And so that's something that if you're doing a remodel or looking at that adds a lot of value um, and, and you will enjoy it as well if you just do it for yourself. Right. Right. And and that's something if you're going to put in a walk-in pantry and you don't have one already, you're going to want to get multiple estimates because again, uh, you want to try to save money and get it done as efficiently as possible. And, you know, some people charge a lot for that and, um, You'll have to see what it'll cost you overall. Uh, and speaking of estimates, uh, let's move into uh, maybe uh, selling your house. There are a lot of varying costs uh, to get your house on the market, right? I mean, you, you want to discuss those plans with someone like yourself. Your clients say, hey, we're thinking about selling our house uh, because it can be easy to maybe go too far with your remodeling expenses and, and thereby shrink your profit potential, right? Tony, I have a great story for that. Uh, one of my clients, she had this house in Florida and it was just it was a little tight. And so she just kicked out one side of the house that was kind of next to the lake where they were living. And she only kicked it out like five feet, maybe four and a half, five feet. And it cost, I mean, it was like $65,000 oh. because she moved a oh. wall and, you know, and then it got the roof. And, sure. and in her mind, she's like, well, that'll increase the house's value by $65,000. It does not. Not five so, feet. Had she yeah. added a room enough for an entire like bedroom, that would have done it. And there wasn't enough space to do it. So uh, there's yeah. things like that where just in her mind, it was just going to be a one for one. Well, it cost me this much. The house will be worth that much more. Nope. And then that's, that's where not was, the way it works. Right. And all. that's where you definitely yeah. want to talk with your financial advisor. And you probably want to have, like I work with realtors. So I would bring a realtor into that conversation as well to say, you know, Hey, we're considering doing this remodel. What's going to add value. And Tony, I always have, when I'm talking about real estate, I bring in my, my real estate investor specialist on my team because there's things you can do that will add value. And then there's things you can do that just really don't add value. Yeah. And, and uh, I want to throw in here, I've got a great story. My next door neighbor, good friend of mine. Um, there are things you can do to decrease value as well. Oh. And let me tell you about a remodeling decision he made that decreased the value. So uh, they have their master bedroom downstairs and then there's a bathroom and then a little bedroom uh, across the hall. Well, what they did is he had the idea, I want to make this bathroom that's tiny downstairs bigger. And they were going to widen it, put in a big walk-in shower, and therefore move the wall that's on that uh, small bedroom side because the, the bathroom's next mm -hmm. to it. They moved the wall in to make room for, to make the bathroom bigger, and then turned that, put a doorway through the wall from their master bedroom into that and made that a big walk-in closet. Mm -hmm. So he did that. 
and got it done. And it's like, wow, this is great. You've got this huge walk-in closet with all this storage space and your bathroom's amazing. He did a great job. He did it all himself. He moved that wall like four feet, right? And mm -hmm. just added three or four feet to it. Well, what happened was, is the next property value assessment he got, uh, his property had decreased $60,000 in value because it went from a four bedroom to a three bedroom. Oh. He lost a bedroom. And 60 to 100 grand, uh, you, you don't go from a, you, your bedrooms add a lot to the price. You know, if right. you have a two bedroom versus a three bedroom versus a four versus a five, because you got families looking for more room. And he lost a bedroom by doing that. It was a small, small bedroom in the basement, but still uh, it changed the price of the value of his home 60 grand instantly. It's just unbelievable by doing yes. that. But he immediately, he, he actually went in, knocked the wall, redid it, put the bedroom oh, no. back. Yeah. He completely undid his remodel. He had to remodel the remodel. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. So, I mean, it can make a difference. It can make a difference. And that's where it goes back to understanding, like, is this your house that you're going to live in? Or are you trying to make an asset that you're going to be able to, to sell for a profit? So right. those things feed into those decisions, you know, and then it just things, simple things like when you're putting down new floors, are you going to go for hardwood or engineered or luxury vinyl? Yeah, there you go. And because they all cost different amounts, but they all look pretty nice. And it, it really yep. kind of comes down to, you know, what's your end goal? Yeah. And I can tell you for Chris and I, we went, we just redid our floors and we went with real hardwood because we're never selling this house. We have made this house for us, but I can tell you financially for someone who's going to be in a house for, you know, a few years and then sell it and move on luxury vinyl would have been the way to go. Yeah. yeah. It's really good for it, pets and, and, and it's good for kids and it, it yeah. looks just fine. So it, it's, I just hope everyone listening understands that there's so many things that you can do, but just because yeah. you can do it doesn't mean you should do it. <laughs> right. There you go. I think that's a great point uh, when it comes to getting a house ready to sell or remodeling. And we've covered a lot of different points today, Tara, but we're almost out of time. Is there anything else you want to add for our listeners before we go today? Well, Tony, I think the bottom line for our listeners today is when you're looking at real estate, this is where you should really, I would encourage you to give Chris and I a call to talk about your house and, and is it an asset or is it not an asset? And how do you make decisions about putting money into your house? Because there's things you do because you want to increase your value of life. And then there's things you do because you're looking for some return on your money. Right. And so we set aside 20 complimentary calls, Tony, the number 719-210-4242. And Tony, for those folks listening today that really want to get after what problem am I trying to solve and am I making the right decision to get there, especially when it comes to my investments in my property? And so, Tony, that number is 719-210-4242. All right. Sounds great. Thanks, Tara. And listeners, thanks for tuning in. That does it for today's episode of Nolan Financial Radio with our host, Tara Nolan. Join us again for another episode of Nolan Financial Radio. Take care, and I'll talk with you next time.